Okay, so we have a few more modifications to make with the, um, the body. Uh, I missed the uh, the boss on top of the um, the right side, so we're going to try and identify that uh, that geometry. As far as the hole locations, I'm not really worried about it. We just need to figure out where and when that occurred. So if I click on um, the base, all right, so pretty much right there, uh, cut extrudes. And we can go through and we can identify kind of the progression. And so since that was put in at the very first, um, well, it'll probably mess up at least one of the fillets. But if I'm going to take my pick, I'll put it in right before the fillet. So nice rollback. And convert the entities in. Pulls everything into that edge. If you already um, uh, recognize the boss and put it in, you don't need to do it again. Um, so on my layouts, on the uh, the top layout, I should have that circle location. And we'll go Control-5 to look at the top. And it is 225 by an eighth inch deep. So rather than modify my, my sketch and go through all of, uh, all of that, I'm just going to create a cut feature and remove some of the, uh, the material. Alright, so not under any illusions that I can catch everything and as we're going through these uh, through these parts. So extrude 0.125 on depth and then the fun part will be rolling forward and we'll roll forward maybe a group at a time. If there's going to be error, errors then I would like to kind of minimize and be able to identify. So there is fillet 18 and not letting me, there we go, edit the feature. So missing edge, missing edge, and missing edge. Well, we'll just make those go away. Oops, maybe I shouldn't have cleared the selection. So let's get out of it and go back in, edit feature, and delete. There we go. I'm not sure what I did before, but it didn't delete the group. All right, so since that pushes uh, pushes it down, and fillet 19 is the last uh, of the fillets, then I should be able to go fill it. It's still set an eighth of an inch. Everything connected to the face will get a fillet, so including the radius coming up to the boss. All right, so fillet 20 can go in after fillet 19, and when we close that up and close, well, maybe the layout too. And then we'll go a couple forward, and so far so good. A couple more, a couple more, and not a terrible rebuild. We got the geometry in, um, maybe not the, uh, the best way, but the quickest way to make the modification. If it becomes an issue, I'll, uh, I'll either correct it later out of the layout and build the boss up the other way, or we call it good. Uh, the other piece of geometry that uh, we need to get into are the through holes. So radius of 0.625. And let's see, where is the, uh, the call out for that one? We have the two radiuses. Let's go ahead and zoom up on that a little bit. All right, not seeing any other Oh, four times. So 531, and then it has that one has the spot face. So, and that one doesn't really call out three times, but I think we can saf safely make the assumption that those are going to be half inch, and then we'll have to deal with the spot face as a separate item. So let's go ahead and generate that uh, that boss. And again, we've already kind of committed. Yeah, let me uh, let me undo that because the uh, the fillet in there. I really don't want to mess with the uh, the fillet. So one more roll back, get that out of the way. Should have just stayed with the uh, the top layout shown, and we'll go underneath. And then I can open up the sketch on the base, pick up the uh, the layout, 
And since that was 0.75, I'm not overly concerned with it. Um, I'm extending out the wall when it's 0.625, and we'll set those to equal. All right, so that gives it the, um, the layout. And we're going to extrude those out. And then go ahead, um, let's go up to surface and pick the surface, and then it has a terminating feature. All right, so that gives me the boss underneath. And I'm still going to need those for the other holes. So let's see what happens with the fillets again. Since I made a change, will it update? Well, it lost one of the tangencies. We're not really wrapping around kind of like I expected. So let's identify that fillet. I'll just click on it. There's fillet 17. So we'll edit the feature, come back and grab a couple more since that should not be an issue. And I'm not really looking at the, uh, the pop-up here. I kind of know what I want to, uh, to add the fillets, and they're not that many. So I'm not really going to chase those down. All right, so that fillets in and around. And then uh, we were still talking about the, um, the casting, so drilling the, uh, the holes can be uh, an after-the-fact thing. So let's go ahead from the uh, from the top. Um, let's see. I need to verify. Nominal distance was zero inches. All right. So no uh, variation between those faces, and that's important because if I use the hole wizard and put it on those two faces, are they always going to stay coplanar? If this was to raise up and this was the lower down, um, depends on which one I pick first. All right, so if I'm attaching my whole wizard uh, feature to a plane and then the other plane changes, I could lose some depth or it would just get consumed in the geometry and I would see a hole on the bottom, but the spot face or the rest of the hole might be gone. All right, or not, not complete. So we, um, let's go ahead and make it two separate items just in case. So S key, whole wizard. Pick a uh, simple hole, ANSI inch, all drill sizes, no, we'll go to fractional. And then under fractional, we'll come down to half an inch. And the end condition will be through all. Positions, because I pre-selected the face, then I'm just going to come back to that layout sketch and pick the, um, the three locations that I know. Oh, said I wasn't going to do that one. Well, let's see if we can generate a, an error for it. All right, so that one went in at the bottom. Uh, let's look at the call out again for the other one. 531 through with a 125 spot face. Um, no depth call out, so probably an eighth of an inch. Oh. And then that one was the half inch, so actually those ended up being the 531. Oh, and there's the other spot face, so picked the wrong side. All right, so that one goes away anyway. I'm going to expand out uh, just so I can get away from my timer. All right, so spot faces are a little bit different than, uh, than the counter bores. So since we're going to update that, that one can go away. We, uh, we are on the top side, so I don't have to change the, the plane. If I had uh, opened the, uh, the whole wizard on the bottom, I would have to um, pick the first sketch and change the plane to the top, so that's okay. Um, on the, the positions, then, let's go back into the point tool, and we'll put it right on those items. We need to go find the uh, the 531, which should be, what, 17, 30 seconds. If we show the decimal values, that usually helps. So 515, 531, and we'll go ahead and accept. All right, so that's still a, a simple whole pattern. All right, so I haven't quite gotten there yet to, to open up for the spot face. Um, and based on the, the casting, the reason that we'd put a spot face in there is that's a machine surface. They're all at the same level. 
not expecting any unevenness between. So don't really want to, uh, to modify a counter bore. Not going to apply standard holes, what we have tapped, pipe uh, tapered tap, not going to work. This is a good spot for legacy. And under legacy, and matter all configurations, yeah, that's fine. And the type to be edited, we're going to switch over to still going to be a C, uh, seaboard drilled. How about counter drilled? All right, so that one's showing through. But the advantage here is it's an out of the ordinary. It's not going to show up as a standard counter bore that when you go and actually measure it, you're thinking, what is this thing doing? All right, so um, the uh, the values then are kind of listed up here. So diameter um, 787 is the uh, the through hole. So 531. Uh, I need to double click. And if you encounter any files from 2004 and previous that have not been updated, this was Hole Wizard. This is what you got. So um, they've added added quite a bit of functionality over the last. Okay, 14, 14 years. All right, depth then, uh, derived from the end condition. Okay, that's fine. The uh, counter drill, 1.575. Uh, uh, we'll go to 1.25. Uh, the counter bore, counter drill depth. Let's stay with the, uh, the eighth of an inch as a best guess. And that looks pretty good. And then we'll double check the, the geometry. So did I pick counter drilled or counter board? Counter drilled, didn't I? Yep, C drill. Okay, we'll try one more time. All right, so diameter 0.531. Depth is already in. Uh, 1.25 and then 0.125. Thought there was kind of a a lot of numbers there. Much better. All right, I can uh, I can work with that. All right, so it just shows up as hole one, and if you want to know what it is, then you dig a little deeper into its geometry. But it will still show up as uh, a hole call out in the uh, in the drawing. So one more for the um, through hole. And we'll go back and pick up the fractional. Now I can grab the uh, the half inch. Um, blind in condition goes up to next. And then we'll go into positions, locate it, and place it. So just like on the last one, I went through kind of three iterations of, well, that doesn't really look like. I don't really want to put in the spot faces separate. I'd rather have the geometry tied together. Um, you know, pick the wrong one, and that's going to be the advantage of Hole Wizard is that I can make those changes on the fly without committing to multiple features or having having more geometry than I um, you know really want to contend with. All right, so a couple of uh, quarter twenties, and so yeah, let's let's tie the quarter twenties in there. All right, so the quarter twenties, um, and on the upper they're shown as through. And it says locate from item 20, which is the piece that we have left to do. All right, so on center line, uh, 1.25 and 4.125 away from the edge. So since I'm in this orientation, see, I don't know that I would tap them in that orientation, but I guess the other thing would be 2.515 and 510. And on an assembled piece, that is a fairly tight tolerance. That's a put it together and finish machine it uh, kind of tolerance. You're not going to just assemble that and hope it comes out to half a thousand. Even on my best day of machining and grinding and bringing all that to size, there's going to be some variation, angularity, something somewhere that is going to put this out of tolerance by a half a thousand. So. It's one of those build the parts, leave the extra material, bolt it together, put it back into the surface grinder, and dust that off. All right, so we'll go back to the uh, to the top on that one. 
Oh, didn't need a sketch, so undo S key whole wizard. Alright, so tapped hole. Uh, we're just going to go straight through, tapped hole, quarter 20. And up to next should be okay. Yes, we want to see um, the uh, the cosmetic threads. I don't know that I want to go with the uh, the thread call out. And there's no near side or far side countersink on this one. So we place it and place it. And then we'll assume from the edge, 1.25. But if we need to adjust, we can always come back to those numbers later or potentially tie them to item 20. All right, so I'm sure later on there will be something I'm thinking about that I missed or overlooked, but we're going to call that the body. If you got something close to that, you're there. Uh, we, we beat on this thing enough, and it's time to, to move on to our next uh, next piece. All right, so item 20 I still want to reserve for Thursday um, because I'm going to illustrate this as a top-down assembly. And in the top-down assembly, we're going to take a slightly different strategy and tie these parts together. So that leaves the, um, the couple of items on uh, the third sheet. And we'll try to get through these uh, tonight. So I think we, uh, we decided that this was the, uh, the most, next most complicated. So let's try this without the layout sketch. We're just going to build our geometry and start taking cuts and come up with uh, with an outside shape. So um, the up, the over, the up, and then kind of back around. And yeah, maybe the up over to the side and around. And then we'll build in the interior geometry. And then the, uh, the rotating portion and relief. I'm not too worried about that. There's just, um, there's a little bit of complexity in this, uh, in this, but probably not as much as the, uh, the body. All right, so and I also kind of expect that as we go through these iterations that we're catching some of the, the overlooks, some of the mistakes that I made as I'm modifying and correcting the body. Uh, when this goes over to the assembly, there's another round of iterations that as we're putting this together, um, does it look right? And then we go to make the drawing. There is that last um, uh, looking at the part with critical eye and saying, does this make sense? Somewhere in those three processes, we should be able to um, hammer this thing out. All right, so for a starting point, uh, let's go with the lower left. And we'll bring it up. I'm going to go ahead and include the radius. So tangent radius, continuous. Um, come back over to a step. And that's good for now. All right, so... Bring this up and over, just kind of getting to this point. And there's the one that I missed, radius of 0.125 back to the uh, the face. So they gave it just enough of a relief to be uh, to be annoying. So question is, do I delete or do I try to do something uh, something else? Deleting it's probably the uh, the best option. We go back into the continuous arc. I'm going to bring it up so that it connects, and then I'll go back with. Uh, my selection, I should have picked it there, vertical. And then we'll come over a little ways. And that starts in on the angle. All right. So overall, let's see if we'll get some dimensions here. 3.625 to the center of the hole plus, all right, so that means there's going to be a center line. And might as well be infinite length. All right, so I'm going to call that the edge. I don't know that I have to have that on the origin, but we'll work uh, back through it. So 1.25, and then to the end is the 3.625, 3 and 5 eighths. And then we had uh, a r the radius of 0.125. So that flattened out nicely, but not what I wanted. So to correct for the uh, the radius, we're going to make uh, the center point and the line coincident. 
and then the endpoint of the arc and the um, the center uh, horizontal. All right, and then once we put that radius on, expect that it'll come in 0.875. that that'll bring it in to be fully defined. All right, so up and over on the angles then. Um, another whole mess of uh, chain dimensions, so let's go this way. And that's still going to be a a tangent radius, I believe. <clears throat> All right, so let's fly it back in. We can kind of decipher what's going on. All right, so this outside angle coming up to the tangency back up and over. We've got um, 2.937, so 2 and 15 sixteenths to the um, to the top. Uh, looks like 1.25 from the base up to the step, and then the 2.937 comes off of that. So we'll go with another center line, pick up those numbers. So 1.25, and then a thickness of 1.25. We'll get rid of that. All right, and then we don't have the um, the rest of the items there just yet, so back into the line. We'll go continuous, come back, attach, and that gives me a closed profile. But I don't expect to get tangent between the line and the arc. I'm going to have to add that separately. All right, a few more dimensions. Um, radius of 0.75 to the outside. And then now I have enough geometry to put in the 2.937 number. Let's see, do we have an angle or just dimensions? So from center line, looks like uh, two and a half back. Right, when they get to be jigsaw puzzles like this, I'm really expecting to have to make some modifications. That goes to the center line. That one's coming back to, to there. Nice inversion. All right, radius of another radius of 0.875. Okay, we can do that. Almost look like uh, 1.875. Get rid of that endpoint. All right, one of these got to be able to drag. And we don't have a tangency there because it came off of the smooth transition to the arc. So that's my clue that I need to add the tangency. And then bring that one back. All right, so a little more deciphering. Something's going on with, uh, with my geometry, so. 3.625 was to the interface and 1.25 back. Okay, we gave that the center line and then it climbs up uh, 1437 between the holes. That doesn't help me. The 1.25 up to the step. And then we trace that back to its center point, back to its center point, and up. That should be the 2.937. 45 degrees over in the corner. And assuming that that stays uh, stays with the tangency, and no real um, no real depth there. Hmm. All right, so 45 degrees it is, and hopefully it will uh, uh, come out. Uh, let's see, they did that off a of vertical. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it off vertical. All right, so if I come off of the vertical, I should get the 45 degrees. And we need a height from the face to the uh, to the edge is 3.25. And 
and it inverted. That's nice. <laughs> So 2.5 from the 3.65 should give it an inch and an eighth. So let's double check that number. Yeah, inch and an eighth. And we'll leave that one over to find as a reference. <coughs> let's see, so the 0.875. And where is that coming back to on center? That can't be the center line. So that was to the uh, the through hole. All right. So that being the case, we have the uh, the previous document. So we're going to have to uh, to go look at the previous document. So the one point two five. Over to the up over two and a half back to centers, eight seventy five back to the interior wall looks like. Hmm. Oh, there it is. All right, I thought I was gonna have to chase it down. Alright, so not much better, but have a little more, uh, more information. Ah, the two and a half goes to that one. And then one inch goes back. Alright, so let's see if we can pick out those numbers somewhere. So I know I saw one inch, but there it is, one inch. And then two and a half is back to the whole location. Alright, so that's a little challenging to decipher. So two and a half goes to one. That looks a lot better. Um, the radius goes to and actually that, that was a one point eight seven five. Okay, and we'll pull that back just a little bit. All right, we still need a center point for it. And it looks like they're going to Okay, so that one that one can't be one point two five then. So five eighths and point one two five to the line. All right, 0.625. That pulls it down a little bit, but that also messes with the next step. Because then there's another 5 eighths here, so well, let's see what it does. 0.625. And then the center point is coming back to at least that intersection. So we'll go coincident. Can't find its way there. All right, something's got to move, I hope. Yeah, so that's going to shrink to zero. One and seven eighths. Yeah, it's not adding up. Come back up to and then the step. All right, so here's one of those places where, since I'm searching, we're going to no, not read only driven so that I can move that back a little bit and go to coincident. All right. So the 2.937 adjusts with that location. All right, so another center line. And we'll tie it back there. So that'll be where we um, we ultimately end up with our, our step. 
All right, and then the 3.23, no. Okay, so let's just get rid of that one. It's going to conf be confusing. And then 1.25 on the step. So I don't know if that made it better, but it made it fully defined. All right, so we're working through the dimensions, trying to figure out um, uh, where all these items go. And so that step will go up and over. All right, I feel reasonably confident about the, um, the numbers. So let's go ahead and extrude it and see what happens. All right, so thickness. Um, Get back to it is three and a half, so this will be mid plane. 3.5 on the step. And then if we go back to that, that sketch, know that I'm going to need the, the 1.25 at least, and it is only being split by point, uh, 2.5 across the, uh, the center. So still on the front plane, we'll use that same geometry. And actually, um, as much as that goes to the interface, I could stay with the, rec the rectangle. That'll come back up to the first location. Well, if that goes to the step, yeah, as long as it goes to the regions, Okay, I can tie it to the uh, to the interface or to the uh, intersection of the uh, the arc, and then the uh, the next one. That step was one inch off of uh, off of center. So let's just go with the second. Double check our numbers. So that one ended up one point. Oh, there it is. One point two five. So that's correct. And then we just need the, um, the depth. Okay, and then those are the two regions. I could trim out in between. I have overlapping lines, not something I'm fond of, but let's go ahead and see if it works. So region and region. And because they're intersecting bodies, we will go mid-plane and two and a half, and that'll get it to the step. All right. So still staying away from the radiuses. Fly in one more time. All right. So 1.75 between the faces, 875 to the flats, um, 0.062. What I would really like is just a dimension from the inside to the inside, and then we can uh, we can build up those um, the spot faces. So that went one and three quarters, but the early does not have uh, have that geometry. Okay. So 875. And then they're showing the 062, so 16th undercut on the uh, on the casting portion of it. And then that is to a uh, to a wall, so all right. So if that doesn't add up, 1.35, uh, sorry, 1.75. From the three and a half gives me 1.75, which, yeah, 875 and 875. So maybe we push that, that back out. Okay, so 875, that would bring the wall thickness here to 13 sixteenths. Um, eight, um, 8125, 813. All right, right plane, open up the sketch. We're just going to start at the top to get the, uh, the location. And then uh, select the midpoint, find the, uh, the top 
that's a silhouette edge, but that will uh, that will work. I'll give you my end point, uh, midpoint. And then we said the wall thickness was going to be 0 0.81, 812. Let's go on the low side. I need the uh, the inside geometry, so we're going to go to wireframe, so I can pick up that first step. All right. And that gets me located off of the piece, centered on the part. And then we have a distance. We had the uh, the 0.25. I really don't want to add all of those up. I'd rather just have a number. Nope, not going to get it. All right, so one and a quarter features extrude cut 1.25 plus 2.5 plus uh, 875 and going the wrong way let's go ahead and reverse it and that just barely cuts into the geometry and 0.25 on the wall thickness yeah I swear by that all right, so way too much invested at this point, so it's time to save. Uh, item, um, double check, item two, the cradle. All right, so we've got the geometry. Same thing that we did before is, um, you know, how, how concerned are we with the casting? Uh, that was a neat exercise, but I don't really want to do it again. <laughs> So that being the case, we're going to try the fillets at the very um, on the very end instead of uh, as we go through the mix. All right, so uh, let's um, instead of the circle, let's uh, see if that converted entity. We pull the arc around if it'll become a circle, and so it got rid of the endpoint, not uh, made it a complete circle. Now I can't really revert back to an arc. It's still got an on-edge uh, relation, and once I made the uh, the endpoints coincident, I don't know if I could get rid of the coincident or not, but I wanted the circle anyway, so 0 0.062, and it's 175 on the um, on the width, so not overly concerned. There, open up the next sketch. We'll convert the entities. Drag that around. Features, extrude, 0 0.062, accept. So just verifying, would expect to see 1752, uh, half a thousandth um, in both directions, and half a thousandth on that. Yeah, it probably adds up uh, about that quick. So 1752 gives it a little more clearance because we didn't carry the fractions out to four or five decimal places. So I'll, uh, I'll live with it. All right, so whole locations. Uh, let's go ahead and start with, uh, with these. I'm OK on the outside. Uh, nothing fancy about these. Um, they are um, going to be reamed. So 624 and um, 6245, maximum material condition, 0.624. And then that can be an extrude cut. And actually, let's see, the other one, is that also through all? It gives it as uh, four times. Oh, so there's another one down here that um, also goes through the, through the walls. Okay, so that dimension was off of our first sketch, so I'm still gonna have to go back and find the, uh, the center lines. Um, Location-wise, then, we have the uh, the two and a half, so I can still pick up that same center, 2.5, and two and an eighth from the, uh, the top, 2.125. Um, then it said four times, so those two will be equal. All right, so oh, I didn't complete the, uh, the extrude cut. 
that will be a through all, and it will find the terminating side. All right, the ones on uh, on the front then. Let's double check and um, make sure that those. Okay, so that's the four times. One, two, three, four. Got it. And then on the, uh, the front, 0.749 to 0.75. but not getting a two times there we go 625 to 626 all right so three different hole sizes just to make sure that it's uh it's complicated enough so sketch i'm going to stay with the um with just drawing the sketches maximum material condition 0.749 and then its location will be at the end point so i'll make sure i'm picking up the center we can get rid of the dimension, and then those will be coincident. And go ahead and extrude cut through. Next one, sketch. That was 625 and 626. So maximum material condition will be at the, uh, the 625. And we'll find the location to be centered. Okay, so coincident. And then between the holes, 1.437, uh, 1 so 1 and 7 sixteenths. Yeah, I guess that looks about right. Extrude cut through all. All right, so we have everything on the uh, the front side of the body, I hope. Uh, we got one more. That's a 3816, uh, three, so S key, go into the hole wizard, tapped hole, pick up the 3816. Uh, it's given as a um, in intersection, so yes, up to next. And we'll go control eight. And it's set at 625. So since we have that sketch, it wants to, uh, to split it. I'm not even going to worry about the, um, uh, the dimension. I'm pick something that's usable. All right, one more save. And we'll, um, we'll be into the, the back geometry. All right, so for the shaft, We have a, uh, a neck down, five inch for the uh, for the washer face, fifteen thousandths, uh, two and a half inch diameter. So that means on the uh, the back, there's a little raised area for the um, for the washer face to contact. And then a small radius for the relief. Okay, so I was debating whether to um, to do that as a as a build up or as a revolve, definitely as a revolve. Okay, so front plane sketch, center line, horizontal infinite length. We'll just place it. Um, distance had the uh, the three point two five. I'm gonna need to decipher that one a little bit. Um, yeah, it's bringing it. Um, it is bringing it right through on that face. So two and a half. I'm not sure that I want to rely on that face. So I, this one I want a, a hard dimension on. So 2.5 without any uh, any stack up. <clears throat> All right. So we'll close it off. Intersection up over down the relief back over, come out a little ways, another thread relief, back down, and the geometry. All right, so two and a half on the diameter. And we'll get the other side of the, um, 
a step. Okay, so those go. This is going to go through those bearings that we did in the uh, in the body. So the one point seven seven one six. And that's a plus or minus two tenths. So that's a, a mean or no plus nothing minus two tenths. All right. Well, yeah. Six would be maximum material. Let's see. Radius one thirty second. Let's see. Also from the spot face. Looks like this is going to be the. Four and three sixteenths, so four point one eight seven, and an overall of five. But even the five looks like it is. Is that coming off the spot face? So, yeah, I'm gonna need the point oh one five, and we'll determine where the four and three sixteenths goes. Move that dimension over. And then we're going to need to do the same thing with the overall la uh, uh, length is pick the of the spot face, bring it out, and go to 5 inches. All right, eighth inch uh, wide on the, uh, the thread relief. And then um, they're going to the minor diameter, looks like. So 1 and 3 quarters, 16. That'll put it... Um, 0.0625. Make those. Well, we had what seven seven two. Yeah, it's not going to line up at uh, one and three quarters. One point seven five has a major major diameter. Can't go to the back side. I need the thread relief where the threads terminate. And then overall, and we got that. Let's see. Um, so here's one of those. Not sure why it's not uh, going to find because of the way that it rocks. It's kind of an indication that one of those needed to be vertical. So we move it, see what it does. All right. And the call out was um, 093 by 062 deep. So 3.30 seconds, maybe not, <laughs> 0.093 and um, 0.031, 0.062. All right. So crazy amount of geometry in the, uh, in the shaft for something that's fairly simple. Features revolve 360 degrees, and we want to uh, to pick up the cosmetic thread. Uh, let's see the um, the other one called out a radius. I think we'll just leave that as um, as a relief. Problem with that is that um, well, we chuck this up in a lathe. This is not a rotating mass. This is going to be a vibrating rotating mass to. Uh, turn that face and turn this geometry. So, not sure exactly where we're going to pick up either. Well, you know, still S steel stock. Oh, that's the spring. Sorry. Yeah, it's still saying it's a steel casting. So, I'm having a hard time believing that they're going to put that between centers and be able to turn all that geometry and the threads. All right, stranger things have happened. I'm lucky I'm not, not the one making it. It'd be scratching my head for a little while. Uh, what else do we have? A 45 degree chamfer on the end. Uh, we'll wait for that one. Um, let's go ahead with the uh, the cosmetic thread though. And if you pick that, uh, that leading edge, insert. Uh, we're going to scroll down, find annotations. And if we're doing enough of the uh, the cosmetic threads, we'll add cosmetic thread up here to the sketch tools or to the features. Um, standard ANSI inch. 
and search for the one and three quarters sixteen. Up to next should terminate it at the um, at the edge. And we'll go ahead and accept it. All right, so it doesn't really look like it did anything. We've got the the circle. If we go look at it normal, then we have the simplified thread form right underneath. Oh yeah, that would be uh, 1 and 11 16. So I made the relief just a little bit deep, but uh, since it's not called out, it's not going to hurt my feelings. 16 and still a 3A. Hmm. Okay. And then to uh, to pick up the uh, the chamfer, are we far enough along to do the chamfer? Oh, the countersink. So we added that to the library, hopefully. My designs or my design library. Yep. So the C drills will drop on the the face, and this is going to be a number three, and it's looking for the uh, for the edge. So that places it. And as long as we have that link back to the library, if any of that geometry changes, it will update this part next time we open it. So not, um, not concerned, but may, um, if this is going to travel around or we're going to place it on a server and more than a few people are going to open it where they may not have the link or we haven't made sure that this is on the correct, um, in the correct folder and everybody has the link so that, um, uh, the library feature can go out and be uh, can be located. Then I would probably just go ahead and dissolve it and make it a local copy of the countersink. Chamfer, nice. How about we go uh, 0.062 instead of 10 millimeters, and that should push the um, the thread back just a little bit, but not too much. All right, what else is missing besides radiuses? Well, believe it or not, I think it's there. All right, fillets and rounds. Uh, 0.062, except we're otherwise called out. So 312, and here's another one of those places where all this stuff comes together. It's going to be a little, a uh, little interesting. All right, so that whole face, that edge that edge and that edge. Uh, I think that's probably going to stay to the 0.062. Fill it. 0.031. Oh, not a 32nd, 5 sixteenths. And putting three decimal places on a radius, good luck with that. And feature expert, let's go ahead and see what it solves. And pretty much where it comes in right here. Did not repair anything. That's not, uh, doesn't happen too often. Usually it finds something. All right, so where those corners are coming together, let's go ahead and clear selections. We'll start with the smaller ones. 062. Looks like everything's finding its way around, so. Oh, yeah, I probably couldn't resolve that one because it's only a quarter inch thick. Okay, so that one comes all the way up and around. Okay, I'm good with that over there. Into that one. Uh, the end face. Still hesitant to pick faces. I'd rather go with the uh, the edges. And can't hardly tell if it's on the bottom as well, but yep, might as well assume it's going to be on the bottom. All right, so get rid of the 0 0.031 or 0 0.31 and see if it'll take that one. All right, fillets everywhere. All right, so we'll try the 031. Oh, the, that 5 sixteenths is messing with me tonight. So we'll, we'll try the 5 sixteenths. 0.312. Okay, so I still have a preview up to that point. So those look pretty good. 
I'll bring it to the intersections at the corner. And if I needed, I'd probably go back. It's still going to be that one intersection, isn't it? All right, so where I wrap that around, that's kind of the, the problem area. I want to miss ones back there anyway, so. Wow, that's huge. All right, so that one is probably not going to to come back up. So let's get rid of it and see if the 5 sixteenths will find where this, uh, this face goes in. And so that one came down. Well, missed that one. All right, so let's take that one out as well. My timer is right in the way. Let's see if I can edit the feature from the from the work area. Wow, that's a little scary. All right, but it took, and the fillet can go 0.062. We'll bring it back up and around. All right, so 0.25 across the uh, the face. Um, what else do we have? Kind of looks like this would stay with the um, the 0.062s, uh, but yeah, no, that's um, that's about it. So let's get the quarter inch in there, 0.25, and then since it'll follow the tangencies, we'll go there, there there and there. Okay, that's a lot of scary blending, but yeah. Um, that's where the, uh, the note comes in, um, file to suit. <laughs> um, I really don't uh, if that doesn't come off the casting, or like I said, if we're making this, we're reverse engineering and going to have to CNC manufacture this, it's not getting all those radiuses. Those are going to be sharps that we're going to take in deburr, uh, deburr knife. We're going to take a file. We're going to take uh, 3M wheel and soften those edges, but they are not going to be 062 all the way around. If I can't reach it conveniently, um, I'm not going, to, not going to fight it because all of a sudden this is a five axis project and we're easily going to triple the cost. Okay, that was way too much fun. <laughs> All right, so on the way home, I'll be driving home and thinking, oh man, that was the dimension I missed. Uh, should have ordered, uh, ordered that, uh, that fillet another, uh, another way. All right, so let's go ahead and close this one, and we'll, uh, we'll slide the cam in here tonight. And then that will leave, um, what, three parts for Thursday is hoping to get through this. But um, Okay, so the cam geometry, kind of an up and over. Hard to, hard to tell if they're doing the, um, uh, looks like it's going to be flat on the bottom. And still has that, uh, that shaft diameter, so radius of one inch, tangency into radius of 0.125, back over. So the 875, and I'm putting that to the chamfer. That goes to the inside. Mm, overall height. And then, okay, there's the radius. All right, so I can, um, can kind of decipher that. All right, so based on the last couple of, um, of through items that got kind of... Um, Interesting like that. We'll uh, we'll save it for later. Front plane, center line, infinite length, vertical, and we'll go ahead with the center point arc. And if we make uh, the origin, that would be kind of uh, convenient. And I want those points to be symmetric, so I'm not really worried about mirroring them. 
just that they they stay um, um, stay symmetric with the uh, the geometry. So kind of the same thing here. All right, we can come off tangent. And then uh, the 2.125 is almost um, has to be to the uh, to the intersection or the virtual sharp. All right, so we had a radius 3.062, another radius of one inch. So at least these are coming out a little close. Uh, 875. We'll stay with the uh, the sharp. All right, and then 2.125. For the uh, for the step. Now, where does that move to? Because we're showing that ah, coincident to the center, right? So then, since that's able to move, the um, the lines coming off of this and projecting to the center point where I pull the dimensions, that's going to be the uh, the assumption I'm going to stay with. So, select Control Select the uh, the origin. Those become coincident. Right, and then didn't quite make it to tangency, right? Because they can move off of um, that smooth continuous curve. Tangency, and then those two items get the mirror. And I'll worry about the um, the eighth inch radius at the uh, and the chamfer at the end. So thickness uh, looks like 484. And we'll stay with the midplane. All right, so what is that a 64th under the uh, the half inch? So just a little bit of clearance. Double check. Yep, 484. All right, so sketch. The um, the circle diameter is given as one inch. And then the, um, the notches are the um, hmm, that went to three degrees. Not sure what three degrees is, so I didn't see that one. Uh, let's go with the um, three point center. So if we come off that way. And that way, well, that didn't quite go to the direction. Perpendicular, which ones have the uh, the horizontal and vertical? I'm not going to be able to find it. I'm going to go over to display delete, perpendicular, parallel. There it is, one vertical. Okay, so that vertical is keeping it from rotating. And then these are going to be equal. One side will be, okay, one of our center lines will be vertical. Nope, I got that backwards. Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. I'll set those to equal, and then the, uh, the width is 875. All right, and then if we want to, um, to trim this, uh, we had had the fun with the, um, the geometry last time too. So if we're going to trim this, it would be that one. And here's the problem with trimming is that we start losing relations. And all of a sudden I have to, to do a little more to the, um, to the model. So in that case, I would just as soon go ahead with the feature extrude cut and invest the effort into, oh, yeah, that wasn't much effort. <laughs> we have all the overlap and intersections, so I don't know how I managed to make the other ones uh, as complicated as I did. Another video I get to go back and watch and scratch my head. All right, so that was all of the interior geometry. And we have the radius. 
of 0.125, except in the chamfer is um, also 6 steel. So we go from fillet to chamfer, and it's staying at 0.06 steel. And we'll save that as the item 24 as the cam. All right, so making progress, we're getting there.